Down here, the 2019 IRI, team number 2767, Strike Force. Absolutely phenomenal team. They uh, got out in the uh, finals of their division this year, uh, but also two time world champions the two years before that. So here are Sierra, Robert, and Greg, and talk a little bit more about this incredible machine here on Behind the Bumper. So we have some really cool stuff to talk about. Uh, Trident suction, a lot of, lot of big suck here on this team, right? You got the Trident suction, we got the uh, suction climb over uh, on the uh, uh, climber as well, too, uh, and then awesome sword drives as well so why don't you start talking about with this monstrosity that you have here yeah so this is going to be the trident that we do the game pieces with so this is our end effector um so on the bottom here it's going to actually attach to a vex planetary gearbox or sorry a homemade planetary gearbox that we made and it's powered by a 775 pro so it actually gives the ability to swivel uh, swivel 360 degrees around the robot so it can place game pieces left and right uh each suction cup on the end here is actually actuated so that it can uh, comply to surfaces like the like the hatch um hatch panels it's also on polycarb, so it can bend left and right when it hits uh, hits the rocket. And then this middle suction cup is specifically for cargos. So this is actually a plunger, so it can push cargo off. And it's a lot larger, so it has a higher surface area for more compression on the ball. And Roberts, if you want to demonstrate that real quick. So while he's demonstrating, let me ask you, um, what made you guys decide to go with suction for a lot of the different mechanisms on your robot? Yeah, so we had a big limit with um, uh, motors this year, and we were trying to figure out a good way to get rid of that because Swerve takes up quite a lot of motors rather than like any other Swerve dr our, um, drive system this year. Um, and then we found that suction will be able to get multiple components with um, you know one motor or two motors all in one place in the robot, which is low to the ground, so we don't have heavy weights out on the end effector taking a long time to get around because that's really hard for tuning. Awesome to hear. So uh, speaking about, of course, on the other side, we have this massive uh, suction climber here. Uh, so I want to check in with Sierra, talk a little bit more about this uh, awesome machine. All right, so on the back, we have our suction climb. It is a little bit, a lot of a release, uh, but what's going on is there's a grenade pin that on the winch, when the rope runs down, the pin pulls out, so it's going to pull out and releases a climber on a four bar mechanism. It then will run down with the rope on the winch and suck it onto the pad. The physics works out that the, our center of gravity is the exact length of the back here is 16 inches and the arm out is also 16 inches. So you only need the bare minimum force and suction to actually get up on the cab and then it looks like it's levitating but it's really just sucked down on that material. So not too many teams uh, use the suction climb. At what point during the season or, or during your build season you decided, like, this is the way to go? So it was probably, like, day one or two. It was really early. Uh, the reason why we went for it is because we wanted to make sure that we could maximize the amount of space other people could climb on the hat. That meant having a low profile, and if that meant being down on the very small edge of the hat or going underneath someone else's bumpers to climb. That was the way to go. And the way we figured out would be the best way to do that would be suction. So that's how we went towards that. Very cold here. And lastly, I would be remiss without asking about uh, the incredible sword drive that 2767 uh, has created uh, in multiple years has really led them to a lot of success. So we got a little module here to show off. Tell us more about this. So this is our current year module. The biggest difference is that we have a 3D printed hub here. Um, we use 3D printing because that is our biggest access. Uh, we do not have a CNC mill or a lathe, and so it takes more time for us to make that than others. So, um, and then we also have custom wheels this year with uh, different over molding um, to make sure we have more traction on the carpet. And so it weighs about four pounds and five ounces this year, which is our lightest yet. So. That's insane. I want to get a little bit close up here on this 3D printing. Uh, how has the success uh, worked for you guys on this? Have you seen anything break? or anything like that or has it been pretty robust for you? Um, we've not had a swerve drive module break this year. The only thing is sometimes the tires get worn down and we have to change the tires, but that's it. So. Well, 2767, what an incredible machine they built this year and for many years now uh, here in first. Good luck here at the IRI and of course in future years, what an incredible team they have here. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.